Welcome to today's video. My name is Brian Smith, Customer Engagement Manager here at Samsara. And during today's video, I want to go through the fleet maintenance page during, in the Samsara dashboard. The objective of today's video is to review the maintenance tab. At a high level, we'll talk about status, logs, scheduling upcoming work. The DVIR portion will cover how drivers enter DVIRs from the mobile app, as well as how they can be approved from the dashboard. The status page can be found under maintenance and then status and gives you a high level overview of all of your vehicles and any faults that are currently being statused. The log feature, also found under maintenance, can be a really useful way to log work orders. So in the case where you want to log work that has been done or have a system of record that is stored in the cloud, you can utilize the log function to record the vehicle, any freeform notes, the odometer, and the date that the work was completed. The log can also be used for the scheduled and upcoming work feature that I'll show you in the next slide. So for scheduled and upcoming work, this feature, also found on maintenance, can be utilized to schedule work that's coming up and also get a view of when that information will come due. From this page, the schedule page, you are able to title your schedule, come up with a description for that schedule, and then base it on distance traveled or a date time. So if you know that you need to make a certain update every 365 days or however many miles, you can set up that schedule and the system will then count off and set up a upcoming reminder as to when that work is due. Um, the reminder exists here on the upcoming page. It is an alert like a lot of the other features, but whenever you come to this page, you can see the work that needs to be done, when it was set up, and when it becomes due. Once you've completed the work, you can mark it as resolved, and that starts a new counter for the next time that work needs to be completed. If you'd elect to hit snooze, snooze allows you to push that date backwards. And so if you know that rather than um, in the next thousand miles, you want to extend that timer another hundred miles, you could go in with snooze and push that delivery date out another hundred miles. And then with ignore, if you know that you're not going to complete the work, but that you want to reset the, the counter entirely, you can hit ignore and then an entirely new schedule will be set up for the next time you need to, pre to perform this work. All of the resolve issues are then stored in the log, which I presented in the previous slide. So those two pages work together to help you out in that way. What we're going to spend most of the presentation on, we'll be talking about the DVIR flow. Um, at a high level, and I'll dig into this in a second, the DVIR flow works in a scenario where the driver performs their pre- or post-trip inspection. Uh, all the DVIRs are loaded into the maintenance dashboard, so regardless of what they find, if there are no defects or a number of defects, they carry over to the dashboard. Any unsafe defects can be brought to the attention of the mechanic. I'm using kind of a general term here for roles. You'll, it'll make more sense a bit later. The mechanic then approves that the fix has been, been completed and that the vehicle is now safe to drive. And then a second driver, driver two, will, will perform their own DVIR, like a pre-trip in this case, where they will review the vehicle as well and sign off that it's safe. And that is the entire DVIR process flow within the Samsara dashboard and Samsara driver app. We're going to go through a couple of graphics to kind of make that uh, a bit more real, have it make a bit more sense. So the first step, as I mentioned, is driver one. In this case, he's B Smith. Driver one B Smith has logged into the app. They're going to click into the DVIR page, and you can already see that there are previous DVIRs entered. Uh, this is something that's really important to know. For every DVIR that's entered against a vehicle, it will exist in a list much like this for the driver to see. So we can already see that there was an issue on this vehicle that the mechanic in this case marked the vehicle as safe. So we'd be asked in this case to go in and approve, uh, you know, sign off a second time and approve that that, that safety um, designation was true. We do that as a driver by clicking add report. This is how we start our own report. The vehicle information in terms of name is pulled over automatically. The driver will elect to be doing a pre or post trip. They have the option of taking pictures as part of a walk around. In your Samsara dashboard as an administrator, you can make walk around pictures required, but by default, they're optional. If during the inspection as a driver, I observe any defects, I can click add remove vehicle defect. And from here, I'll get a, a list of all the defects available in the system. At the very bottom, there's an option for other, but basically this is a checklist that drivers can go through and only check off the defects they observe during the inspection. If they don't see any defects, if the vehicle is safe to drive in their estimation, then they don't need to check off or enter, enter anything. In the event that they find defects, one piece of functionality that's helpful, just like when doing the walk around for pictures, you can take pictures of the defect. And a lot of maintenance teams have found that very helpful. So if you take a picture of the existing defect, um, 
and put in some free form text about what the issue is, uh, that can be really helpful for your maintenance team to more accurately, more quickly resolve the issue. Any pictures that you take during the DVIR process appear again in the SEMSAR dashboard. So it's really easy for them to be remote, see what you're about to send in in terms of work, and prepare on their end. Whether or not you observe defects uh, during your inspection, you will be asked as a driver to either mark the vehicle as safe or as unsafe. Uh, and you can find defects that don't impact the safety of the vehicle. So maybe you would say something like the heater is broken. Uh, that might not necessarily impact the safety of operating the vehicle, but it is something that you want to be resolved. And so as a driver, you can put in something like um, there's a defect with the heater, but the vehicle is still safe to operate. Um, in either case, you will say certify and save, and that will save your DVIR. As I mentioned earlier then, the DVIRs that are posted carry over automatically to the dashboard. So anyone who has access to the maintenance tab within the dashboard can see those DVIRs come in, coming in and follow up on any defects or unsafe DVIRs. So if you're, the, if you're a maintenance person watching this video, um, these next few slides are tailored specifically to you and, and ask of you in terms of this role. So when an unsafe DVIR comes in, you can make updates to that entry, not by clicking in the entry itself, by, by, but by clicking the add a DVIR entry. This will create a new row. For every review of the vehicle, a new entry is created, whether it be in the dashboard or in the driver app. So as a mechanic, you will click add a DVIR entry. You'll pick a vehicle from the drop-down list. The odometer will be pulled over automatically. And here's where you can put in your freeform notes. If the issue has been resolved entirely, you can write as much. Um, issue is resolved, uh, possibly include the work order number or whatever your company policy ends up being in, term, in terms of records retention for tra tracking how the work was completed. You can then check off that the vehicle is safe to drive, previous defects have been corrected, and then you can save that entry. And that's how you would, as a mechanic, sign off that the vehicle is now safe to operate. Once you've made that save, the screen changes a bit. So this first entry from the pre-trip, this is what driver one entered. They had a defect. It initially said unsafe and was in red. It now says resolved and is in green. And then you notice I was doing the headlight replacement. Um, that's kind of the DVR I put together for this presentation. As the mechanic, here's your entry. Same vehicle. Here's your name. The quick notes that I had on the previous slide. Headlight replaced. And now the vehicle has been marked as safe. And so if you've done everything correctly, the vehicle no longer shows the defect because you marked it resolved, and the vehicle is now shown as safe because you as a mechanic has said the vehicle is safe to drive. The last step is then to have a second driver log in and perform their DVIR to sign off on the vehicle. So now we have Jay Smith as the driver. He's logged in. This is his, his app. He'll start his DVIR pre-trip. He can already see on his screen that a previous driver, Brian Smith, had an issue resolved and that the mechanic, in this case, marked the vehicle as safe um, based on the work that they'd done. So Jay Smith already knows the history, as I mentioned earlier, that's happened on this vehicle before they needed to drive it today. So assuming that driver two observes no defects, uh, they're going to go through the process. They're going to land on the same review screen. When they elect to mark the vehicle as safe, they'll be reminded that there were previous defects that they're now signing off as being corrected. They will say certify and save. Once they certify and save that, their entry will be added to the top. And so now that second driver is the final entry for the purpose of this presentation. So again, we have the pre-trip that driver one did, the fix that the mechanic signed off on, and then the pre-trip that driver two per performed. And again, if we go back over to the dashboard, you wouldn't have to do this. But if you wanted to see all the information in one place, you can now see the first review, the mechanics review, the second driver's review. And so there are three line items. If you ever want to see all of the information in one place, a, a lot of customers have one standard form that goes back and forth between people. Um, you can just click into the original defect uh, report, and that'll have all the signatures carried in automatically. So if I carry over to that, I clicked into the resolved issue. I can see all on one page. I have, I have two pictures here just because the page is longer than the screen, but I can see my initial pre-trip issue. Um, I can see the picture that I took. It was a headlight issue. And then scrolling down a bit on that page, I can see the first driver, B. Smith, Brian Smith, when they observe the issue. The defect's been corrected because Brian.Smith, the email address, the mechanic with the dashboard access, signed off on it. 
and then J. Smith, Jeff Smith in this case, signed off on it as well. And so all in one place within that resolved issue, I can see the entire history of what went wrong on that vehicle and who observed it and who signed off on the repairs. One last reminder before we kind of hop into the demo portion is alerts. So if you have access to the alerts feature within your dashboard, um, it comes with the Samsara dashboard, so it's just a matter of permissions. Uh, you have the ability to set up an alert for d unsafe DVIRs. So you can set up an alert that looks for every unsafe DVIR that comes in, and as long as you manage your address book, you can set up an alert to go either via email or by SMS to whoever needs to be notified. So this can be really useful for just giving your local maintenance team a heads up. One of the vehicles has reported an issue during the DVIR process. Um, again, it comes with pictures and everything once they click the link, so that can be a good heads up. This can also be a good heads up in scenarios where maybe um, maybe your fleet team and your maintenance team, maybe they're a third party vendor. So they're not always on site, but you want them to get a notification every time you discover an issue during, um, during the DVIR process. You could have this alert set up to go to that third party vendor. That way, when, you, when one of your drivers identifies a DVIR, they get an email or they get a text message and they know that they've got to come on site um, to review that vehicle to get it back in service. So a really useful way to kind of include people who might not need to be in the dashboard all the time, but will have a vested interest in any unsafe DVIRs that are reported. So with that, I'm going to move over to the demonstration portion of this video. So for this demonstration portion, I have a couple of things set up here. You can see that I have my Samsara dashboard open. Um, we're going to go straight to the DVIR page because I think that bears going over the most amount of time. Um, but you can see I have some DVIRs recently completed, um, and from this page I can do a couple of things that I didn't mention during the presentation, but I want to draw your attention to. So in this demo account, I only have one vehicle. I only have so many DVIRs that I enter on a regular basis. But if you find that you are uh, you know, inundated with the amount of DVIRs, there's a couple of things that you can do to manage your way through there. So always be aware that you can change the time frame here to browse between um, current and previous DVIRs. You also have the option to filter out your list. So you can make filters that show you all DVIRs, just uh, safe uh, DVIRs, just unsafe, and any resolved uh, safety status DVIRs. You also have the option to only show defects. So a lot of customers are often interested in scenarios where, uh, like I mentioned earlier, the heater's broken. The, there's a defect, something needs to be repaired, but it isn't preventing the vehicle from being in service. And so by selecting show only records with defects, you'll only perform, you'll only see those records coming in. And I'll kind of show what those look like after we go through the rest of the demo. What I also have on my screen is a quick mirror of my mobile device. So on my mobile device, I can kind of show you what the driver goes through in terms of setting up a DVIR. So, if I want to set up a DVIR in this case, the first thing that I'll do is I will log in. So I'll click here, we'll log in. I'm going to select from uh, the vehicle that's offered to me. It's the only one in my vehicle, Volvo 430. So I pick my vehicle, and now I'm going to start the DVIR process. And you can see I already have a history of previous vehicles. I, I had already resolved an issue that a mechanic signed off on, um, and then we ultimately will mark this safe. I'm going to go to add another report. And again, for hours of service, I'm going to be forced to go on duty. So now I'm on duty as a driver. I've started my new DVIR. I pick pre trip. And again, as I mentioned, I can take pictures. So in my account, uh, it's not required, but I just want to show you what that looks like. So I can now take pictures as part of my walk around. I'll show you what one of the walk around pictures looks like. I can also take pictures as part of any defects that I observe. So I can take a picture here, lights, um, nothing, nothing too exciting, but just a couple of pictures. Um, I can say that lights, we'll just be simple, lights broken. I can enter defects without pictures, tire flat. And if I go all the way to the bottom, like I mentioned, we have an other case. So if there's a scenario that's not covered within the system for you, you have other. And I'll just write other defect. Let's just show you what it looks like when we save it. So I've identified three defects in this case. I'll click Done. And now you can see all the defects that I have down here. Lights broken, tires flat, others, other defect. I could add more. I could remove some. But I'm going to go to Next. 
And then from here, I have the option of marking the vehicle as safe or saying it needs attention. For this presentation, I'm going to say it needs attention. I'm going to certify that. And now you can see I already have a new entry. Pre-trip by Brian Smith, the vehicle is now marked unsafe. Uh, if I drill into this one or anyone, I have a quick you know, visual of just the walk around picture. Uh, the defects are still just a list here. Um, and there's just kind of some line items about how we would fix those or if those have been signed off on or not. Uh, and this, this goes for all of them. So they all look roughly the same. If they're signed off on, they have that signature there. So in this case, um, I've signed off on my DVIR. Uh, and something that I've noticed came up on my screen because I had the alert set up, this is the unsafe DVIR notification that I mentioned. So from the app, you can see we have this unsafe DVIR. If I go back, back over to the main screen, I'll give that a refresh. And now you can see this unsafe DVIR came in. It's got the exclamation mark here because it's a defect and it's currently unsafe. And again, if I look at all my unsafe, I can now filter down just to unsafe, just to safe, or all. So as a driver, this, this vehicle is not safe to drive. I'm going to have to do my work in another vehicle or just be delayed this morning. So we're going to sign out real quickly and go on to the next step. So again, this next step is for the maintenance personnel. So for you as a maintenance team member or a mechanic, you're going to click in. You're going to go through the notes here. So we have broken light, flat tire, defects. And if I had multiple walk arounds, I'd have the front, sides, and rear of the vehicle. And right now we just see that Brian Smith has marked the vehicle as unsafe. If I want to add in a new entry, I can go to add vehicle DVIR, pull up my vehicle, and I'll just keep it simple for the purpose of the presentation. All issues have been resolved. Vehicle is now safe to drive. I'll then say previous defects are corrected and save. And now you'll see a couple of things. There's a whole new line entry here. This was unsafe with the defect. The defect's still here, but now all issues have been resolved by the mechanic in this case. This issue's been fixed. If I click into the original issue again, I can see the original issue, but now you can see that Brian Smith, the driver, his entry is there, but then the defect's corrected. It's been signed off on Brian.Smith, the mechanic in this case. And we're just waiting for that next driver signature. So what I'll do next is go back to the summary, We'll leave that there. And now we want a second driver to go in and review that. And so we'll have Jay Smith do this. We'll enter our password. And now Jay Smith signs in, picks his vehicle. And now you can see there's two entries, right? Brian Smith and the mechanic. I'm going to do my own report, switches me on duty again. Pre-trip, in this case, there are no defects to be observed or to enter. The vehicle's safe, and now it's going to remind me, you had unsafe DVIRs that must be resolved. I'll sign off that they've been corrected. I'll certify and save. And now, as a second driver, I've signed off on that vehicle being safe, and so now Jeff Smith's final signature is there. And you can see, kind of, if you were paying attention to the dashboard over here, that new entry just came in. If I go into the most recent one, I just see Jeff Smith's entry, um, but I can go into the fully resolved issue that now has all the information here. Here's the initial issue that was resolved. Brian Smith found it. Brian Smith mechanic resolved it. Jeff Smith, the second driver, signed off on it. And that looks exactly the same here for the resolved issue. Brian Smith, the driver, found the issue. Brian Smith, the mechanic, resolved the issue. And Jeff Smith signed off on that. And that's everything that you need to know in terms of managing DVIRs and understanding the maintenance portal. Thank you for your time today. I hope you find this informative and have a good day.